Um, okay, tonight uh, I wanted to take a look at uh, the stripes. We read about the <clears throat> uh, those that are beaten with many stripes versus those that are beaten with few stripes, right? And we kind of wonder what it's all about. Uh, I know perhaps with the five months there are those who um, who may try to uh, equate that to the uh, the judgment, uh, those that are tormented five months, right? As opposed to um, the uh, uh, the unsaved, well actually the, the believer, well you know what, I, I'm not really sure because I, I think it's been a while since I heard uh, Mr. Camping's understanding on that. It would be kind of interesting to see how he would uh, uh, relate to these verses right now. Psalm chapter 89 verse 32, stripes. <clears throat> Again, this is a word that appears to uh, relate to the, the tribulation as a whole, right? And that's not surprising. We see that uh, when God talks about chastisement, when he talks about fasting, there's a lot of different language that God uses to talk about the nature of the, the Great Tribulation. The nature of the Great Tribulation. But we always break it down, right? We, we separate the Tribulation when we start looking at how it affects the, the true believers versus those who remain under the wrath of God. In Psalm chapter 89, verse 32, Then will I visit their transgression with the rod, and their iniquity with stripes. Proverbs 19, 29, Judgments are prepared for scorners, and stripes for the back of fools. <clears throat> we know that, uh, given the proper context, uh, when God is talking about fools, right, the wicked, uh, He has in view primarily those that are in the churches and congregation, right? Now, <clears throat> what about those who know the Master's will? Um, we read, for example, in Luke chapter 12, verse 47, And that servant which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many. Now, the word stripes is not there. That, that's in italics, but <clears throat> I think it is assumed there they're talking about stripes. Uh, but how do we understand uh, those who know the Master's will? Well, the only verses that I can find, a few verses, which appear to be uh, in harmony with everything else we've come to understand. Uh, James chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is, it is sin. You know, the corporate body, again and again. Uh, the word goes out, uh, Babylon is fallen, right? Come out of her, my people. Uh, the believers have been sharing the gospel, uh, even though from time to time uh, they are cast out, right? And we know that when they came into the time of tribulation, uh, the the unsaved in a body, they, they kill the two witnesses. And so nevertheless, uh, God appears to be giving us a picture here that uh, those who knew the Master's will, right? Those in the churches and congregations. They know to do good, but they do it not. Reminds me of another verse in the book of Hebrews um, about those who... Uh, how does that go? <clears throat> about uh, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, right? Once they, uh, those who come to the knowledge of the truth. Now in Matthew chapter 25, verse 26, His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Let me make sure. Uh, okay. Um, and so here again, we, we see the, the idea of those who actually know. In this parable, God is talking about the wicked servant, right? And they know, right? They know the will of the Master. We see the same language here, uh, similar language in Luke 19, 22. And he saith unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Now, you know, just looking at the context alone, 
right? The context of Luke chapter 12, verse 47, that that there God has to be talking about the unsaved, right? And the reason I say this is because of the word many that is used there. I'll see if I can share some verses later on, uh, try and shed some light on that. <clears throat> Remember, many are called, but few are chosen, right? Many are called, but few are chosen. God uh, uses a lot of different language uh, or a lot of different places where he makes reference to the many. The many almost always uh, appear to be identifying with the unsaved in the body. Whereas the believers, the few, the remnant, they are the belie they are the um, those who do come out of tribulation. Okay, so shall be beaten with many. And now the the believers, right? When we look at Luke chapter twelve, verse forty-eight, but he that knew not, and that's a very interesting verse because, oops, I didn't post. Hold on a second. Uh, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few. Now again, just looking at the context, that has to be telling us about the believers, right? It has to be related to the believers. But we, we have to search the Bible to see if we can find language that would support that, right? The believers, how is it that God is uh, making reference to the fact that they uh, they knew not the master's will, right? He that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. Now when we go back to the book of Leviticus, uh, we do find some very interesting language to uh, those that sin in ignorance, right? The sin of ignorance, which appears to be that sin that allows the believers to find a covering, to find salvation for that sin, right? Luke chapter, four, I'm sorry, Leviticus chapter 4, verse 2, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, if a soul shall sin through ignorance <clears throat> against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which are not to be done and shall do against any of them, right? Um, and I think the, the verses that follow that will show that those who sin in ignorance, they have a, a sacrifice, they have a covering. And we're going to see that in a few verses, um, just in a little bit. Uh, verse 27, uh, Leviticus chapter 4. And if any one of the, any one of the people commits, uh, and if any one of the common people sin through ignorance, while he do it somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which are not to be done and be guilty. In verse 28. Okay, uh, verse 28. Or if his sin which he have sinned come to his knowledge, then he shall bring his offering, a kid of the goats, a female within, within blemish, I'm sorry, without blemish, for his sin which he have sinned. So we <clears throat> already we see here that God is setting up the stage for a sacrifice, right? For the sin, the sin of ignorance. Um, Numbers chapter 15, verse 27. And if any soul sin through ignorance, then he shall bring a she goat of the first year for a sin offering. Okay? So again, those that sin in ignorance, right? God here appears to be giving us a picture um, or the idea that they have a sacrifice. They have a covering. God makes provision for their sin, right? In verse 28, Numbers uh, chapter 15, <clears throat> and the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sinneth ignorantly, when he sinneth by ignorance before the Lord, to make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. It shall be forgiven him. 
uh, Leviticus chapter 5 verse 15 same wording same language if a soul commit a trespass and sin through ignorance in the holy things of the Lord then he shall bring for his trespass unto the Lord a ram right without blemish out of the flocks is the sound better now Sean or <clears throat> You might, have, you might have been having problems with the sound there. Um, we're looking at Leviticus chapter 5, verse 15. If a soul commit a trespass and sin through ignorance and the holy things of the Lord, then he shall bring for his trespass unto the Lord a ram without blemish. So we know that that is pointing to the, the atonement, right? The sacrifice of Christ out of the flocks with thy estimation by shekels of silver verse 17 Leviticus chapter 5 and if a soul sin and commit any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of the Lord through though he wist not that is he did not know yet he is guilty and shall bear his iniquity Right? So again, I, I thank God there is underlining the fact that there are those who sin, they do not know. They sin in ignorance. Right? And for these people, God makes provision. Right? He allows for a ram, He allows for a burnt offering. And therefore, they have a covering for that sin. In verse 18, and he shall bring a ram without blemish out of the flock with thy estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his ignorance wherein he erred and wist did not that is he did not know and it shall be forgiven him so can we begin to see the uh, the connection here that God is making perhaps uh, with those who sin through ignorance right Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6 Uh, suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin neither say thou before the angel that it is ignorance it is error right without a wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands in other words uh, <clears throat> do not take the defense that it is a sin of ignorance because a sin of ignorance has a covering right uh, they identify with the uh, with the burnt offering. Now, when we uh, one more verse in that section, First Timothy chapter one verse thirteen, and this one I think we can relate to. Uh, this is uh, talking about Paul, the apostle Paul, I believe, <clears throat> who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor, and injurious, but I obtained mercy. Why? Because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So you see, Paul also, he was, a, um, he was an elect. He's a child of God. And the sin that he committed, the idea of persecuting the church, uh, God is making reference to the fact that he did it in ignorance, right? And so therefore, from that perspective, I think he could be identified uh, with those who... Um, those who have a covering and he did become saved Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 2 and it shall be if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten that the judge shall cause him to lie down and to be beaten before his face according to his fault by a certain number now we're gonna look at this number here uh, I think uh, this number ties into the number God is talking about the number 40 and Lord willing, we'll see um, how that might relate to the uh, the tribulation. Uh, in verse 3, 40 stripes he may give him, not to exceed, lest if he should exceed, and beat him above these many stripes, then thy brother should seem vile unto thee. So in other words, if someone is beaten above the number 40, and what did we say earlier? Uh, the number 40 identifies with what? 
it identifies with testing, isn't it? Doesn't it, right? It identifies with testing. Uh, I also mentioned earlier this number here, the number 43, right, where we see the 430 years in the wilderness. It identifies with uh, captivity. So again, it's a number that brings us right into the Great Tribulation. The number 23 identifies with tribulation and judgment. The number 7, contrary to uh, uh, some who believe that the number 7 is only talking about perfection, but that's a number I think we can uh, trace, uh, bring right back into the Great Tribulation. Um, all right, so the number 40, because it identifies with trial, right? Why is it that someone would not be beaten uh, with more than 40 stripes? Before you answer that question, let's see if I could maybe share some additional verses. Uh, so 40 stripes he may give him, not to exceed, right? Lest he should, if he should exceed and beat him above these with many stripes, and we know that the many uh, have to be uh, referencing or identifying with the unsaved in the body, right? Many are called, but few are chosen. Uh, if they are beaten with more than that, then in actuality they are vile, right? They are despised. They identify with the corporate church, right? The unsaved in the body. And But the believers, they are not beaten above 40 stripes, right? Numbers chapter 11, verse 33. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, um, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Now, the connection that I want to make here is the, the many stripes, right? Um, it also uh, it is pointing to the tribulation, right? The great plague. We see the same thing here in Second Chronicles chapter 13, verse 17. And Abijah and his people slew them with a great slaughter. So there fell down slain of Israel 500,000 chosen men. So the phrase, uh, many stripes, when we start uh, looking at the, uh, and all, you know, certainly because we're looking at the word, uh, the word plagues here also, right? And we know that the plagues, when we go back to the book of Revelation, uh, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, nor receive of her plagues, right? So, again, we can see how the uh, this would bring us into the Great Tribulation. But the believers, they are not beaten with more than 40, right? Why is that? Why would that be? What else do we read in the Bible that would uh, allow us to understand that the, the true believers... Right. We know the stripes identify with the tribulation. The unsaved they suffer the full wrath, right, or the full consequence of the judgment of God, right. And so they are they they go all the way through the tribulation. But what happened to the believers? Right. What happened to the believers? The part out. Yeah, that's one. Uh, but there's another language. Uh, that I'm thinking about that uh, perhaps might give us the, the picture a little bit uh, better there, right? What happened to the believers? What did God say about the tribulation as a whole insofar as the believers? Doesn't the Bible teach that for the sake of the elect, right, those days shall be shortened, right? And so if the days are shortened for the believers, it means that they do not endure, right? They are chastised, right? They, they go through. The two witnesses are killed. From that perspective, they come into this time period. But because they come out of tribulation, right? They depart out. They are not beaten with, with, with the 40. They, they do not go above measure because if they did then they would identify with whom with those who seem vile right as we read here uh, Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 3 if they are beaten above measure then they would be it's almost like the uh, the verses I'm thinking of some verses about uh, the 
the bastards. Uh, there is language uh, elsewhere that kind of like uh, doesn't give it to us. We don't read the, the exact same language, but I think when we look at the overall context, um, those that are, uh, they are bastard. If, they, if ye be without chastisement, then are ye bastards and not sons. So the bastards, they are, uh, they identify with the unsaved in the church, right? And they are the ones that are beaten with many. Right? They identify with the corporate body. They are not sons. The sons, they are chastised, right? They are beaten with few. And the few there really, I believe, identifies with the with the elect. Jonah chapter 3, verse 4. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So just a couple of verses in looking at the number 40. Uh, I mentioned before that it does identify with tribulation, with trial and testing. Uh, Psalm 95 verse 10, which I posted earlier, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said it is a people that do err in their heart and they have not known my ways. Who is God talking about there? Has to be a reference to the unsaved body, right? 40 years long. How 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 long was Israel in the wilderness? 40 years, right? Now, does that identify with the, the tribulation? Yeah, of course it does, right? They came into the wilderness. Did the 430 years identify with the tribulation? In a way it did, right? Because uh, God speaks of the body there being in Egypt. And so you know, we have to look at the context, I think, and, and see how God is using that and how also it would relate to the, the days of the Great Tribulation. So the 40 years, definitely, God speaks of uh, bringing the people out of the land of Egypt and then destroying those that believe not, right? There is a trial, there is a testing going on in the wilderness, which is where the churches and congregations are today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so we see that the number 40, uh, given the uh, the proper context, it does, it does identify with uh, testing. Ezekiel 29, verse 12. Now here's an interesting verse that uh, we began to look at uh, earlier. In verse 12, well actually we're going to get to that. Uh, Yeah, it's in another verse here. We're going to get to it in a second. And I will make the land of Egypt desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate, and her cities among the cities that are laid waste shall be desolate 40 years. 40 years. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and will disperse them through the countries. So again, uh, is there any doubt here that God is... Uh, using the number 40 in connection with the Great Tribulation. Verse 13, Yet thus saith the Lord God, At the end of forty years will I gather the Egyptians from the people whither they were scattered. Now, here's the question. We said earlier, first of all, I mentioned that the, the number 40 identifies with the Tribulation, right? Trial. Now, the believers for their sake, the the days of the tribulation have been shortened, right? So they are not beaten with more than forty. Well, how how do we uh, reconcile then uh, this verse? <clears throat> uh, verse thirteen, Ezekiel twenty nine. Yet thus saith the Lord God: At the end of forty years will I gather the Egyptians from the people whither they were scattered. Did the believers have to go through the entire 40 years of tribulation? No, right? But yet you see how God again here is making reference to the entire 40. That's why, you know, this is an area like everything else, we have to read in the light of the whole Bible, right? What happened to the tribulation? It was cut short. The days were shortened for the sake of the elect. And so therefore, even though there, you know, in that verse, God makes reference to the uh, those that are being brought back, 
after 40 years, it doesn't mean that the believers are still in tribulation. It simply means that because the days were shortened, um, now they are able to come back into their own land. Does that make sense? And so we have to uh, we have to look at the number 40 in the proper uh, in the proper context. But we do know it does identify uh, with the tribulation. Uh, Ezekiel 29 verse 11: No foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast shall pass through it, neither shall it be inhabited forty years. Again, the number forty is pointing to the entire tribulation. But when we view that in the context of the believers coming out, then we know that they are able to escape uh, God's judgment, right? They do not uh, receive the full blow. They are beaten with few. Okay, uh, verse 6, Ezekiel chapter 4, And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side. Now God here is talking to Ezekiel, and uh, in the context there again is the, the judgment that comes on the corporate body, right? Israel and Judah back in the day. But we know that these things are written for our admonition. And so we can uh, begin to see how they do relate to the time of tribulation. Now, when we start looking at the language of lying down, it appears that uh, God is uh, using that in connection with judgment, right? Those who lie down, there are those, uh, I think we're going to see uh, in Psalm chapter 23, uh, the believers, they lie down in green pastures, right? They do not come under the wrath of God. Uh, but in verse 6 of Ezekiel chapter 4, when thou hast accomplished them, lie down on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Let's see if I have the other side of the verse. <clears throat> I don't think I, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think I have the, uh, that would be Ezekiel. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Ezekiel chapter 4. Bear with me one second. In Ezekiel chapter 4 and verse 7, we read, um, actually, let's go back to let's go back to verse 4. Lie thou also upon thy left side and lay the iniquities of the house of Israel upon it according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie down upon it thou shalt bear their iniquity that's verse 4 verse 5 for I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity according to the number of the days three hundred and ninety days so shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of of Israel right? And in verse 6, I, uh, I had on the screen, And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Now, what did I say earlier? You know, if we look at 390, and we add to that 40, what does that give us? 430, right? 430. And we know the, the 40 identified with testing, trial. The 390, <clears throat> I think if you break it down, uh, you are going to find the number 13 in there, but I'm not going to get into that right now, uh, which is another number that appears to be um, you know, related to the Great Tribulation. right? Uh, it identifies with the end. So then uh, when we start looking at Ezekiel chapter 4, then we see that the context there has to be talking about the judgment that comes on the churches and congregations, right? Because the 430 there, the number 43, uh, is a number that identifies with captivity, right? Captivity. And the believers, they go into captivity when they come into the Great Tribulation. Uh, and that is why God, when God talks about the, uh, the depart out, the believers coming out, they are brought back from captivity, right? 
at the start of the tribulation they are scattered and then when they come out of tribulation they God is now gathering his people okay uh, just a couple more verses looking at lying down Isaiah 65 verse 10 and Sharon shall be a fold of flocks and the valley of Achor a place for the herds to lie down in from my people that have sought me uh, Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 15 this is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly that said in, in her heart I am and there is none beside me how is she become a desolation a place for beasts to lie down in and who are the beasts that are in view there who would the beast relate to any thoughts on that you know God uses animals right the beasts of the field the fishes of the sea and talking about those dwelling in, in the corporate body right those in the churches and congregations the beasts of the field a place for beasts to lie down in everyone that passeth by her shall hiss and wag his hand okay uh, one other verse one last verse here uh, looking at those who lie down remember this verse here in the book of Ruth chapter 3 verse 7 about Boaz we said Boaz was a picture of whom Boaz a picture of Christ right he is a picture of Christ but remember when he went to lie down at the heap or at the end of the heap of corn can you see how this really would be language focusing on the the atonement right the fact that Christ came under the wrath of God he had to lie down right he had to lie down and, and he saw a woman at his feet and, and we looked at the language there and uh, did uh, try and make the connection at least that this is uh, talking about the, the believers right the true believers they come and they uncover his feet right just as uh, Ruth did she came softly and uncovered his feet and uh, really a beautiful picture of uh, Christ and the and the believers but before he was able to provide this kind of a salvation he had to lie down that is he had to come under the wrath of God okay uh, I just want to I don't know if I should uh, let's see all right, I, I just talked about the number 430, uh, broken down into 390 and 40, right? And let's take a look at what I mentioned before, that the days of the tribulation were shortened for the sake of the elect, right? Matthew chapter 24, verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved right there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened and then one other quick reference which I find to be interesting here is 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 verse 24 of the Jews five times receive thy forty save one right and I think again this is the Apostle Paul speaking that he received 40 stripes minus one now does that make uh, does that tie into anything does that make any sense insofar as the uh, the nature of the stripes that we're looking at here which would appear to me and I could be wrong on this of course but it would appear that you know as I said before the believers they are not uh, they do not receive the full blow of the wrath of God right why? Because they come out of the Great Tribulation. Um, so when we look at the language of those that are beaten with few, then it means that, and so far as the number 40, they do not identify altogether with the testing because God has cut the day short. Um, so that's how I think we would have to uh, begin to understand some of these verses. Okay, now, as far as the believers, the reason right and I shouldn't be too much longer here I'll see if we can try and wrap it up in the next few minutes the believers the reason they do not come under the full wrath of God right the reason they are beaten with few stripes 
is because they were beaten in Christ, right? They received the plagues, the, the stripes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 55, verse chapter 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Right? It is the stripes of Christ. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Ye were healed. Uh, and we see that in 2 Samuel, God gives us a picture of Christ who were, he was going to come uh, and go to the cross, right, and provide salvation. We read there, I will be his father, right? And the context there, I believe, was talking about Solomon. Solomon was a picture or a type of Christ who built the house of God, right? He built the temple of the Lord. And he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. See that? So did Christ commit iniquity? Did he really sin? No, right? But insofar as the believers, did he sin? Yeah, of course he did, right? Because he took upon himself the sins of the of the ones he came to save, right? He took upon himself uh, he took upon himself their iniquity. So from that perspective, he did commit iniquity, and God did visit him with stripes, right? He had to come under the judgment of God. Um, and so therefore, uh, we can understand that the believers they are able to escape the uh, the judgment of the tribulation. Okay, now the elect endure stripes or affliction. Second Corinthians chapter six verse four. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience and afflictions, in necessities and distresses. Uh, verse five in stripes. Now we know that you know the language of affliction, uh, chastisement. God here is also bringing in the word stripes because that too identifies with the killing of the two witnesses. It has to do with uh, the time period when the believers came into the great tribulation. In stripes and imprisonments and tumults and labors and watchings and in fastings, right? Very interesting. We did see uh, in another study how fasting also relates to the time when the believers mourn right and fasting has two aspects really it has to do with the time of mourning uh, coming into the great tribulation the elect body and it also has to do with sharing the gospel right because when God brings revelation to his people then they uh, they begin to understand the nature of the judgment they come out of Babylon and now they are fasting they are sharing the gospel alright um, almost there Mark chapter 13 verse 9 but take heed to yourselves for they shall deliver you to councils and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten ye shall be beaten and I think we can tie this word here all the way to a verse that I posted earlier let's see which one it is yeah Luke chapter 12 verse 48 but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few. You see that? They are beaten with few. And so we see that the idea of being beaten has to do with those who are put to death, right? It identifies with the killing of the two witnesses. They shall deliver you to councils. In the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings, for my sake, for a testimony against them. Okay, let me just... I said before that many are called, but few are chosen. 
And I think this is a relationship we can make here between the uh, the many having to do with the uh, those who remain unsaved in the churches and congregations versus the believers, right? The few, the elect, the remnant. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. Many will, will say to me in that day, what day is that? They're talking about May 21? Or is that really uh, looking at what's going on today, right? Now, they're not saying this uh, literally, right? But this is what's going on in churches today, right? Spiritually, this is a parable. We have to understand that of the many that God has in view there, right, those who identify with the rich man, they are in hell. And in afar off, they see the beggar Lazarus, right? So it is language bringing us into the, the nature of the, of the separation and God's judgment coming on the unsaved body. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in, th and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. Now, it doesn't mean that, well, I, uh, I can't really say for sure how that is going to work out, whether God is going to bring this to pass, literally, right, when the world does come to an end. But when we compare these verses to the rest of the Bible, we can only interpret them in the light of the Bible, right? We can't go beyond, at least I don't think we can go beyond what the Bible uh, allows us to uh, uh, to, to view. So many will say to me in that day, uh, Luke chapter 13, verse 23, Then said one of them, uh, one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? Right? Are there few that be saved? And I think that was a rhetorical question there in uh, Luke chapter 13. And the answer would have to be, of course, because the Bible teaches many are called, but few are chosen. So we see again that the few uh, does identify with the elect, right? The true believers. And that's how I think we can uh, at least begin to understand the nature of the language that those that are beaten with many stripes versus those that are beaten with few stripes. Okay, quick conclusion and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, from the above information, it appears that the to be beaten ties into the judgment, right? The judgment coming on the corporate body in tribulation. Elect are beaten with few stripes because they sin in ignorance, right? They have a covering for their sin. This appears to identify with chastisement at the start of the tribulation. However, the unsaved in the body, they are referred to as those who knew the master's will and yet disobeyed the master. Right? They disobeyed the master. And so therefore they become vile, right, and come under the full wrath of God, right, having to do with them being cast out of the kingdom forever and ever. Right? Okay, uh, that's all I have for now. Anyway, let me uh, let me stop the recorder and then see if uh, we can take any questions or offer of correction.